Hey everybody, Jim Haas with Blaze. I've been getting a lot of comments on the channel about deep cleaning here uh, lately. Uh, what's the process? What do you do? What should I do? What do we do with deep cleaning? Well, first of all, I will recommend every couple of months, of course, depending on use, I obviously uh, cook a lot. So uh, every couple of months, at the very least, the beginning and end of every grill season, at the very least, you want to do a deep clean. This goes uh, beyond, you know, your once over after you're done cooking. Um, this is, uh, we're going to empty the whole firebox. I'm going to show you what I do. Um, it's, you know, like most things, grilling and barbecue, there's no rules set in stone. I'm just going to show you my process. Uh, a pressure washer works really good for the, for the parts that are in this. I don't have that, so I'm using the old soap and water and a bucket method and, and scrubbing. Uh, so I'm going to take you through that. Uh, we don't really need to be concerned so much with getting it back to that shiny factory finish. Um, we really want to remove the grease spots, the big chunks of food, any dirt and debris that gets in here just naturally from because of the fact that it's an outdoor appliance. Um, and we want to keep ventilation working. We want to keep the air flowing like the day you brought it home so that performance never quits. And uh, let's jump into it. And of course, what we want to do is get everything out of the inside of this, set it aside for the time being including the warming rack. That's going to get a good scrubbing as well. We want to empty this firebox all the way down to the bottom. The drip pan baffles in the bottom do pop out, and I actually have a video just on that uh, because that question has come up in the past. And we're going to get down there in just a second. As you can see, I've been, I've been doing a lot of cooking here lately and, and not cleaning off my flame tamers after every cook like I should have been. Practice what you preach, right? I usually do. All right, now on these burners, they do come shipped with cotter pins. That's really just for shipping to hold them in place in the truck. And I have another video on initial setup and a few different videos where I talk about troubleshooting. And I always say, first thing you do when this grill gets home is pull those cotter pins out so you can pull the burners out just that easy and I even state you want to pull those cotter pins out for a few reasons one is to do any kind of troubleshooting a lot of times you'll get a flame on one side of your burner and you got to clear out this little channel right here which transfers the gas to this side a lot of times that's all it takes um, another reason is for cleaning and another reason is if you get an optional uh, IR sear burner you pull your main burner out and you slide your sear burner right in its place so see I've gone off the rails already talking about uh, <laughs> other things other than cleaning we got to concentrate here all right so now when you get down to these drip and baffles um, these are going to be pretty crusty so before we pull them out just take a scraper and just kind of scrape the big pieces off you'll see there's some smaller baffles that kind of lock into the larger baffles and I'll I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here in a second but just kind of scrape the big chunks off which eventually is going to fall down into your drip tray and then you can just dump that in the trash and that's kind of the easy part of doing all this you can see I don't use this side nearly as much um, but basically once you get all the big pieces scraped off pop out that center uh, baffle, set it on the pile, take out all these smaller ones, and the, it, when it, a brand new grill, these are going to be in there a lot tighter. I've snapped these in and out quite a few times, so the little tabs have kind of worked their way into a certain position, and that's all right. Now, you got the bigger baffles down below. This one's pretty clean, so I'm just going to pull that out now. Press down in the center, pop one side out first and then the other. And then you want to do the same thing on these. Just all the big pieces, all the big chunks of nastiness, just brush them right down onto the drip tray below. All right, and now you've got all this large debris down in the drip tray so again with your scraper you can kind of 
knock off some of these big pieces that are up above. get the idea and then pull that drip tray out dump it in a trash can just that easy as far as that goes so far so good right no problem all right we're gonna reset on this kind of back corner of the yard where I've got my little designated cleaning area set up and uh, we'll get it going All right, in go the pieces and parts. Burners and all. If you don't have the large party bucket, you can always use a few five gallon paint buckets. That'll work fine. You get those pretty much any hardware store. We'll let that sit for a couple hours. I usually let everything soak in the bucket for two to three hours um, and let the, let the dish soap do the most of the work. In the meantime, we'll come back to the grill and you can see here uh, a little bit of buildup on the front panel here. The rest of it doesn't look too bad. Mostly just big chunks that we're gonna kinda take our scraper again with a rag and with some barbecue cleaner. I use a, uh, a simple green. Oh, I'm in the wrong camera. <laughs> I use a simple green uh, heavy duty grill cleaner. Um, you don't wanna oversaturate um, because we're gonna be wiping this down with a, with a wet rag. You don't wanna spray a hose into this. Um, so don't go overboard and this is another reason to do the deep cleaning more times than not because as you can see uh, without really even tackling the inside this doesn't look too bad still an awful lot of stainless steel shining through uh, but really this barbecue cleaner just kind of it's a degreaser just kind of spray it on the areas with the heaviest amounts of debris and it's mostly going to be the front and back panel and then just let that sit on there come back with a damp rag and we'll wipe it down the other thing that's really nice to do too after all this is said and done if you have a shop vac uh, take a shop vac to the inside and really get those last few bits out of the corners You can plan on this, this part probably taking the longest. Take your time, plan for it. Just know it's gonna be tedious. And just get as much surface as you possibly can. And when you've scraped off some big pieces, you kind of go again with the scraper. The stuff starts coming loose. And again, scrape it down into the drip tray and empty that every so often and uh, and repeat the process the other thing you really want to pay attention to is you want to get down underneath where the drip pan baffles snap in a lot of debris gets caught underneath those support pegs so you want to really make sure you get in there All right, I've gone through and done a second kind of thin layer of grill cleaner, wiped it down again, and then took a damp rag and wiped off all the excess. So you can see a marked improvement already. Um, you can even, if you want to get really crazy, you could take these uh, crossover grills off. There's a, depending on how old or new your grill is, if you have a Blaze, that is. Um, it's either a Phillips head or an Allen wrench. Uh, to take these individual crossovers off you can you know clean those individually 
really get this channel underneath there if you want. Um, mine aren't looking too bad just yet, so I'm going to save that for the next time. But for the most part, it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to take a shop vac to it and just get all the big pieces in the corners that I've missed. But yeah, I mean, just go in and two or three times, whatever it takes to get all the big pieces, all the debris loose. Got it down in the drip tray. I've emptied that out so you can see that's nice and clean already. And uh, shop vac it out. Yeah, it's a little warm out here. All right, back to the scrubbing bucket. Now the fun begins. All right, I do have an AC unit right here next to me. Hopefully it's not too much of a distraction. If you're wearing pants or shorts you like, I suggest an apron. We're gonna take a wire brush and scrub everything down, front, back, side to side, top and bottom. Um, and I will take this time to say I use a wire brush for this deep cleaning only. I don't use it after my everyday cooks. Um, I highly recommend you don't use a wire brush to clean your grates after you cook. Um, you can even see, maybe you can see the sun is in my monitor. I can't see what you can see. Uh, these bristles do come off sometimes. And the last thing you want is a metal bristle in your food. Um, what I would suggest for your everyday cleaning when you're done cooking, either a wood paddle that um, it forms to the to the grooves in your cooking rods or what I really like is a balled up piece of aluminum foil and some tongs and just give your your grates a scrape in that way it really gets down in between the cracks and everything really is efficient so um, we're going to get into this again top bottom side to side get all the big chunks off most of them are already off whatever's left on here is kind of loose because it's been soaking in the dish soap for a couple hours so here we go. Okay, down to the burners. Once we get to the burners, what you want to do is pay attention to kind of the back end where it sits into the back end of the grill. Um, kind of gets gummed up there a little bit, so give that area a good scrubbing. And then this crossover channel, this little slot on the bottom side of the burner I was talking about earlier, make sure that's good and clear. Make sure you hit the ports nice one time. And then the top of the burner, which of course is going to collect a little bit of debris. And then I'll let them drain, set them upright, just like so. All right, then I'm going to come back with my grill cleaner, just for good measure. Give everything just a light coating. I'm almost out of degreaser might have just enough let it sit for a minute, hit it with a hose and let it dry and then put everything back together okay not getting any cooler out here hard parts done that's the good news uh, there are a number of companies out there that just do grill cleaning. They do this. They are usually a little pricey, but uh, as you can see, it's kind of worth it. If you just don't have the time or simply just don't want to do this, <laughs> certainly understandable. Uh, but look into uh, one of those cleaning services, if nothing else. Uh, you really want to keep this clean, keep it performing like new, and uh, let's put it all back together.
All right, we are nearing the end of this deep clean tunnel, and frankly, I couldn't be happier. Um, kind of over it. It's like I said, it's not fun. It's not fun. Uh, but we do want to go in now and reseason the grates uh, after every deep clean, reseason the grates. But before we do that, before we heat it up, we want to give the outside a good once over. Any stainless steel polish will do. Uh, with a clean microfiber cloth, a couple squirts of stainless steel polish, very lightly go with the grain of the stainless at first and kind of just go over the entire surface. Anything stainless, um, the lid, the control panel, the sides, the, the front of the cart, the back of the cart, anything stainless, you want to give it a good once over very lightly at first. Uh, it is an outdoor appliance, so even when it's covered up, there's probably a, a thin layer of dust and debris on here, and we don't want to go scratching anything. And then once you kind of go over everything nice and lightly, you can go back and give it a more detailed polish. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, it's just as important to keep the outside polished and nice as it is to deep clean on the inside. There are three things I say you can never overdo. Uh, one is deep cleaning. Uh, the two is polishing the outside and three is seasoning your grates. Those are all very beneficial. You can never overdo that. Um, in fact, this what you're looking at here is the prototype Blaze 5LTE. This was the first one that existed. Um, I've used and abused it for many, many years and I'd say it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, so maintenance is key. So I'm going to go ahead and polish this thing up and then fire it up and re-season those grates. And hopefully this video helped and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.